Yeah. It's very hot. Good old kebab, man. Just good old solid kebab. Welcome to Sarajevo. Let's go eat some food. So today's episode is just basically an appetizer for the rest of the series. We're going to be walking around the old town, what's called the Charsa, and we're going to have just the most famous Bosnian dishes. That's all. All the other cool foods coming up later. So stay tuned throughout the whole series. famous food in Bosnia and probably the whole Balkans is Javapi. It's these little awesome kebabs, right? Um, you find this all over Bosnia, you find it all over the Balkans. It's just basically beef meat, a bit of salt, a bit of pepper, a bit of paprika. That's it. Sometimes there's some garlic powder. In some parts like Croatia and Serbia, they actually make this with a, a mixture of beef and pork. But this, this is it. Um, and then you get this lovely bread over here, somun, right? And in different parts of, of, of the Balkans, they serve this with different bread. But just look at this, mountains, literally, they're just cooking mountains and mountains of javapi. So our javapis just arrived, right? We get 10 of these javapis for four and a half dollars. It comes with some onions and some cream. Right, it doesn't come with cream everywhere in the Balkans. You can ask for that. Right, in Bosnia, they like having javapi with cream. Um, but let's taste it. Good old kebab, man. Just good old solid kebab. The cream is quite heavy. With me is Vlad and Merima. We're gonna speak to them a bit more about javapi and everything else later on. Just a good old, you know, kebab, sausage various things you want to call it. The onions give it a good kick. It comes with this bread called samun, right? Which I understand, Bosnians might like doing this, but they take a lot more bread. And they just love their bread over here. <laughs> and they have it. It comes with the salad. This is a Shopska salad, right? I was in Macedonia and Skopje a week ago, and I had the same salad. It was slightly different. There, they don't put any lettuce in the salad. And this cheese, it's kind of grated over. I really, really, really love the salad over there. I need another spoon. Okay, never mind. No, no, it's fine because you need a, like, it's cool. I'll, I'll, I'll manage, I'll manage. It's lovely. Because the freshness of that cucumber and tomato and the sort of the sourness of the cheese just helps with the javapi. Takes everything down. What am I going to say about the texture? I don't know, man. You are the food blogger, not me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a vlogger. So I'm just squashing this kebab mm -hmm. and Wakas has asked me to speak about the texture of it and I don't know what to say beyond the fact that the texture is quite good and great and I'm guessing the texture is different in different parts of, of different shops, not just different parts of the bottom, mm -hmm. different shop to shop. The texture matters and the texture is different. I'm not the, the real meat lover because uh, it's my first time in the last year to eat meat. Yeah, because last year I decided to become vegetarian and so, just for so you, the only reason, so the only reason you're eating meat is to be on the show. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Look at this, this thing, it's my honor to is, be here and to eat with you. No, no, it's an honor, it's honor having you back. <laughs> right? you. And Merima, you always have it with onions, and that's because you love onions, or is it because the onions give a, give a, like, you know, give a flavor to the jalapeno? It just gives the complete taste. I can't eat it without onions. And I don't like them without onions. Everything else is welcome, but onions is a must. And I put some pepper on it too. Okay, because it onions. just intensifies, yes. It intensifies the taste. And I just love it. And I can see you digging into the bread. Yeah, I love the bread. Now, Bosnians about... love bread. You, you have to know that. Bosnians really love bread. Yeah. Tell me yeah. about this cream. For me, is it essential? I don't like onions, but uh, the kaimak, the cream is called kaimak here, and it's the most important thing for me with java. And yeah. the cream for you also, it's an essential. Do not really. Not, not really? I can eat it, but for me, onions are really Okay, now I, I see you you're eating with your fork, and I was told that Bosnians eat with their hands. Yeah, but I usually do. Javapi. But you know, I, it's the cream and everything. And, uh, and you're on TV and it'll like, be you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice 
the shop is called Jello, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a soccer club. It's one of the big soccer clubs in Sarajevo. And they told me an interesting backstory to this. It's about people basically go to the place, they eat the jawab at the place they support, right? The soccer club they support. Yeah. Is this true or is it just Except like a thing? Me. Yeah, I'm a fan of the Jello club, but uh, my first choice uh, for the Chamaapi is Perhatovic restaurant, uh, which is place for Sarajevo fans. I'm, so it's what, why is it called Perhatovic? Because Perhatovic uh, was Asim Perhatovic, he was the most important and best ever uh, football player in Sarajevo. Okay, so you played the Sarajevo Cup, and that's the opposing team for Jello, right? And you support Jello. Yes, always. And so I like, but I like. I'm guessing there's other restaurants that aren't affiliated to Jello Cup, obviously. No, yeah, they're, they're, they're not affiliated. Yeah, there are many of them. But I mean, at least, but the, the most famous ones are Perhatovic yes. and Jello. Yeah. So Sarajevo yeah. FC and Jello. What's the story? Yeah, the story is behind it that um, in like ages ago, mm -hmm. when these two teams were played, it's like a city derby. You know, it's everybody's like crazy about the team. And these guys were like sworn enemies on that day. So it was impossible on the day of the derby for somebody who is a Sarajevo fan to come here and to eat chibap in jail. That's like it, a like, criminal act. That's like yeah. against humanity. But I mean, was everyone on, on like big derby soccer days, was everyone just eating chibap? Like no, or was it, just it was actually case specific of... for Charshia. You know, mm -hmm. so okay. Charshia, I mean, part this, this part of town, yeah. yeah. And so it's like urban legend, you know, for this thing. When you hear about Bosnia, you also think about the war. Um, now, you are actually born after the war, right? Yeah, a year after the war. Born, and, and, yeah. and are you Bosniak? Are you Serb? Are you. Originally, I am the Serb, but I'm not, I don't like to, to define me as an uh, ethnic part of the ethnic group. Okay, so yeah. ethnically, you're a Serb, but you don't identify yeah. yourself. Yeah. yeah. Growing up, did you feel the cloud of this war or did you not feel the cloud of this war? Uh, of course, yeah. You felt we the cloud did, of this yeah, war? Yeah, we, we actually feel it right now because of media, because of politicians, because of every, everywhere. The war is everywhere, really. Yeah, in the stories, in the PTSD, yeah, unfortunately, and stuff like and, that. And for you, it's different because you. Um, it's basically one sentence. I hope it will never happen to anyone again. The biggest victory of mine and people that I know after that war is that we are not allowing anybody to put us in groups. We are Bosnian Herzegovinians. We do not belong to any yes. or Serbs or Bosnia. We're all Bosnian Herzegovinians. So there's been a, a new identity formed around yes. the state. Yes. Yes. Okay. But yes, and that's actually, actually our way of fighting against that nationalism that actually cost us like millions of lives and families died. Yeah. Uh, people actually moved out of the country, they lost their homes, so it's like millions of lives. We are not in the groups where Bosnian is convenience and that's it. Yeah. And I suppose there's no better way to say we're all Bosnian country. Everyone everyone yeah. enjoys Javapi, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In fact everyone even from all the other Balkan countries enjoys Javapi. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I have said is... it good. Javapi connects people. Javapi connects people. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Javapi connects people, man. <laughs> so look, time to reaching Four and a half dollars for this plate of javapi. I mean, is that a good price for javapi in, in, yeah. in, yeah. in Sarajevo? It's really good. Too. Right, so they know better. So they reckon it's a good price. It's a very good javapi, so I'm giving this, given that it's a good price, it's 9 out of 10. The salad adds a good flavor to it, so this whole thing is 9 out of 10. And this guy said he hadn't eaten meat for a year. For a year, and, yeah. and I mean, we, we had to stop him. He was about to finish, and we're like, listen, we still need a shot. So don't eat all of that, but you're welcome to eat it now. Yeah, you know. thank you. <laughs> How many javapi do you normally eat? Like, if you, like we've, we've ordered 10 this time, but like, is this what you normally get or do you get 15 or 20 or 5? No. 10 is like my normal meal. Yep. Because like, if I go to 15, it'll be too much and it will yeah. just spoil everything. So I don't okay. go over 10. That's great. Okay, so Maybe I'll, I'll stick with you guys. If I still one from the table, from the plate, that's it. Thank you guys so much. We're going to go out now and explore more of this uh, old quarter of the Ottoman city and eat some other more amazing food. See you guys then. Hi, Ice cream is gone back in. So the whole area today that we're in is in Sharka. It's called Old Town. It's divided into the Ottoman area. And you can see, look at this Ottoman chairs, people eating chai, this baklava. And then as you move towards here, there's literally a line in the street and already you can see the architecture is different. You look at that side, it looks Ottoman, and this side, it's the Austrian effect. The city was divided into two, and literally says, Sarajevo meeting of cultures, and you step over here, and suddenly it's like, you know, you, 
not really in Turkey anymore and you're kind of in Vienna. Now, it's a city which straddles these two civilizations, these two cultures, and you won't see lots of tea shops and lots of hand-woven carpets and everything else. You'll see coffee shops and waffles and pastries and everything else. Pomegranates, we're in the Viennese part of the city. I mean, it's Sarajevo, I should stop saying that. And this lovely lady over here is gonna make some fresh pomegranate juice for us. She's gonna make two lovely cups. It's about three and a half dollars per cup. Oh, wow. that's, a, that's a real punch, poof. It's like, you know, it's like when, you, when you're getting your car cleaned with gas. Thank you so much. So you can see that, I mean, this is kind of what it should look like, right? And it's just taken out all of those seeds, all of that juice, and it's all accumulating that lovely jar, sort of. We're waiting for, that, for the next one, because Wakas is getting his as well. Go two pomegranates, it's 10 marks. Right. You know, when you have pomegranates, you know, usually get this like earthy flavor of these seeds, and the earthy flavor comes out entirely. What I like about it, it's not sweet, like, I mean, it's sweet, but it's not overwhelmingly sweet. It's obviously naturally pomegranate, and uh, it's just a lovely, refreshing drink. Kind of feels like you're healthy and earthy, you can carry on with your walk through the city. Thank you so much. Bye bye. How's, how's the juice? I think it's pretty refreshing. Yeah? Hard day of work behind the camera, hey? I'm still having this very refreshing drink. And it's really earthy. It's almost like you're rolling around in the earth. It, it's sweet and earthy. Anyway, I'm here at what's called a Sarajevo Rose and there's hundreds of these around the city and it represents a part of where it's believed during the war a missile landed and killed a bunch of civilians uh, i mean it's it's a very sad thing but it's a reminder as you walk through the city of, of what's actually occurred here um, you know i mean i guess some people be like you know it, it means people stay hung up over the war uh, i have a mixed opinion about it i think it, it it's important to remember that there was a grave tragedy in the city but at the same time, when you know you need to take it in the stride and move on. But it's just something that you find. We've been walking through Sarajevo for a few days and you always find this everywhere in Sarajevo. A Sarajevo rose. Hello. Hi. How are you? Can we get two pieces of borek, please? Okay. Meat, yeah? Meat, yeah, meat borek. This is what we're eating next. Borek. It's borek. Oh, and it's made in this round thing over here, which is called a saj. It's all, let me show you. Thank you so much. There's these amazing ovens, and there's coals actually put on top of the saj. This is the saj, it's very hot in there. Now, the borek specifically is the meat one, the rest of them are just called pie. So it's kind of different to other parts of the world where you do have borek and the, the pie itself is called borek. So okay. what's, what's the weight of this? Uh, 300 grams. 300 grams. Okay, so this is about, it's literally four marks, so it's about two and a half dollars. Look at this, look at that. It's super hot, so I can't even hold the plate. But all that meat in between, the pastry is nice and fluffy. Let's go eat it. I just like the entire look of the street and everything. It's so charming. You've got these small little shops here. I'm going to get some first without any of that yogurt. It's a whole piece. It's very hot. It's so tasty though. The filling is basically the beef. 
the salt, pepper, very little, very light pepper, onions, and garlic. And what really gives it flavor is this bread. I'm gonna take some yogurt mainly because it was so hot. Like the meat's actually very hot. It makes salt in a salt saltier, but at the same time, it kind of brings a smoothness to your mouth so that the salt isn't kind of overwhelming. And this borax just really, really good. And I think for, for two and a half dollars, this is a great snack. It's almost like, you know, the equivalent in New York of a pizza. Or, you know, in Karachi of a biryani. Or in Italy of a pasta. It's just a, it's a staple. And again, it involves meat. But it's not very expensive because it's not so much meat. And this dough is just ridiculously great. I mean, just to try to explain the flavor of this, it's like eating a mildly spaced pastry. In England, it's almost like a corned beef pie of sorts. It really tastes like that. It's a bit different, obviously. The textures are different, the flavor is different. Kind of tastes like also what you get. This is all, 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 usually make like these savory pies, you know, along with samosas, and it kind of tastes like it as well. And that's the base of many, many Bosnian dishes. It's just wheat or something and meat. And that's what they eat, and it's lovely. I, I do think this is, is possibly the best porak I've had in my life. I do like it, I do prefer it to the Turkish porak. And just based on that, and given the fact that, it, I mean, it's, by the Sarajevo standards, it's not too expensive. So give us a 9.1 out of 10. I'm gonna enjoy this. After this, we're gonna walk around some more, explore the old town, and then we're gonna have some sweet stuff. We're at the bridge where the history of the entire 20th century was changed. This bridge over here is where Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife were assassinated. That led to the beginning of World War I. That led to the beginning of World War II, kind of. And because of that, like the whole world changed, maps were redrawn, and all colonial empires kind of disintegrated. Smile. There you go. Smile. See, people come here, they take their selfies, they feel special. Interesting, there's no signage. And why there's no signage about this? Well, obviously, it's a famous bridge. So in the, in the communist era, this bridge was celebrated as like Franz Ferdinand, right? And now, communism is gone. And so, while Archduke had nothing to do with communism, they've kind of wanted to erase all traces of like the communist era and the history of that era. So there's no signage on the bridge. But yes, this is where it happened. We had such a nice time walking around that we actually got a bit late. We we're supposed to meet Haris, he's over here. After we shot for a bit of tea, but we've taken so long just moving around that he's, he's come before we finished, but he's decided he's gonna join us yes. for our final course of baklava and tea and trelech. So this is Haris, he's great, he's fantastic. He has his own fame here in, in Bosnia, but we won't even talk about that. But let's go and, and enjoy ourselves. I just love these colors, it's, it's very nice. $400. 9.5 9 out of 10. There's only one table. Okay, maybe this guy's left. So do you have any Bosnian baklava? Yes, it's Bosnian baklava. Baklava, baklava. Really baklava Bosnian. is not Bosnian baklava. It's Bosnian baklava, believe me. Uh, we make here Bosnian baklava. Bosnian. So how did you say that the baklava is Turkish? He says it's Bosnian. Not it's Bosnian. specifically Turkish, like we don't know. But it's, I don't think it's Bosnian. It's not Bosnian for sure. Look, whatever it is, bring us what you think is the Bosnian baklava yes. and trilech and get us some tea. Tea. What Turkish tea do you recommend? Tea. But we have a Turkish tea. Yeah, Turkish, tea. <laughs> Turkish tea. We have a Turkish okay. tea. It's trilece. We make here in Bosnia. It's Bosnian baklava. <laughs> you know, it's Bosnian, not Gaziantep. So we go some, yeah. some trilech. Thank you. And what he says is Bosnian baklava. It looks nice. Look at the layering. It looks good. So I don't want to claim it, right? It's not ours. You know what this whole thing is? It's free. So is it Turkish? Where is it from? So historically, you're saying it's from one of those countries. Yeah. Yeah. But there is a thing called Bosnia. Yeah, and it tastes different. Right. So it's a bit softer, the, the pastry, but I mean, it's a nice fluffiness. It's not like entirely soft. I always find that when you have a clover, you kind of need tea with it because I find it sweet. And this is not as sweet as the Turkish one, but this is very good baklava. Because I told you, we never put pistachio in it. We always do it with walnuts. So that's two dollars. This is two dollars as well. Trelec is Bosnian though, right? It is, it is from the Balkans. It is from the Balkans. Actually, most of the desserts came with the Ottoman Empire to Bosnia, but this is apparently one of the rare ones. 
So this, this one went the other way. Yeah. So this one the Ottomans took from you guys. Yeah. And I mean, Trinetti is now almost globally famous. It's around the world, there's different takes on this. There's saffron Trinetti, there's pistachio Trinetti, rose Trinetti. This is the traditional Trinetti. This is basically milk. Milk and cream and kind of like a caramel on top. Just watch all the milk make come out as I all that milk comes out. So basically it's cooked and then it's kind of like soaked in like a cream, a sweet cream. It's fluffy. Actually, bite into it, all the cream comes into your mouth. It's close. The caramel on top isn't that sweet. So it doesn't, it doesn't overwhelm the flavor at all. It's not the best trilege I've had in the world. I do like trilege quite a bit. But it's a very good trilege. I'm not here really for the Makava or the trilege. They're both very good. I'm here because well, Harry is about to him. He's a great guy and I've known him for like four years. But it's just a lovely atmosphere. It's a great, great evening. And look, everything costs like $2. The cheese $2. That's, that's probably a bit less. Turkish cheese. So yeah, I think this is a, it's a great experience. Nine out of ten for this entire experience. The Bosnian tea, it almost tastes a bit like thyme, like zaatar. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Bosnian but, thyme? Like thyme? Like thyme. Uh, what do you call it in Bosnia? Majč na dušnica. Majč na dušnica. So it's like... Yeah, it's very specific for the mountains around Sarajevo. So basically you just go with your family and pick them yourself. That's great, what we do. It's great tea. It's not the best tea to be having with sweet desserts. I think yeah. Turkish tea beats that out. But I guess it's something more to have a relaxed afternoon or evening. But it's good tea. We don't have a huge tea culture here, actually. You basically, most of the time, you drink coffee. You drink coffee? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's true. Great, man. Look, we're still going to bring you a lot more food. This is our first episode. We just kind of, as I said, it's just an appetizer of things we're going to eat in, in Sarajevo. Today was just the big things. Javapi, Burak, and a bit of these sweet things. We're just looking at the old quarter. Watch our other episodes for all the amazing, great food we're going to bring you on over the next few days.